Hello community, I'm going to restart this series of tutorials explaining the Godot source code under the hood. I will try to do as much as I can, I don't have a lot of time, but if I find a bit I will try to do this. Please bear with me, I'm going to do this in a way where I won't do a lot of video editing or anything like that because I just don't have the time, I will just go through the source code and I will try to explain as much as possible what I see to you. So this first video is going to be about the file system, uh, how how the Godot folders or the directories are organized and what the dependencies between them are. So our first directory, which is the core of the engine, is called core. You can see it here. Everything that is engine core is here. The rest of the engine depends of, on everything on this folder. So you just can go here and see everything is very low level and everything is the foundation of everything else in the engine. The first thing you have to see here is the typedev.h file. This is the most topmost include that you are going to find in the in the Godot source code. You know, back in the day when people would make a C project, the first thing they would do is a typedev.h file and put some macros and things like that. And then after that, they would make the rest of the source code using those things there. It's like the place where you just throw stuff that you know what to do with it. Well, Godot has one since the beginning and it's still there. It still has a couple of things that you can see. Uh, it's the, the main topmost file in the engine. Uh, has a couple of things that could be moved somewhere else at some point, but it's just the common macros that don't really have any other place around. So, what else we have? We have the config folder inside of core. This has general engine con configuration things. I'm going to get into that later. Just remember one small tidbit, the project settings file here. You know that there's the project.godot file that every project in Godot has. So this project is loaded to the project setting singleton. So the project setting singleton is this, and this is base configuration of everything in Godot. Just so you know. So next, we have some crypto functions here. This is just common cryptographic stuff. Uh, we have some hashing functions. Uh, we have random number generations. Uh, these kind of things are all in the crypto stuff. Uh, debugger is debugger extensions. I won't go into depth here. Maybe when we see the editor, I'm going to go more into depth into the debugger. No need to do it now. We have the error folder. Here we have like a lot of macros that we use for errors and things like that. Again, I'm going to go into the files in detail in later episodes. For now, this is just an overview. Um, we have the extension. This is used for GD extension. Everything that has to do with extending the engine is in the extension folder. We have the input folder. In the input folder, we have the input events, input denominators, the, the keyboard. Uh, things, all that kind of things, the mouse, the joysticks, everything is, is on input. On I.O. folder, we have things that have to do with files, networking, serialization, uh, functions for formats and these kind of things. It's, it's mostly everything that has to do with input output. Then we have the templates folder, we have our templates. Again, I'm going to go into that in more detail another day. Uh, just know that this is kind of like, you know, like you have STL templates. Well, we have our own templates in Godot because of reasons we're going to discover in later. Then there is the object folder here. The object folder is the base of the Godot uh, object system. Everything that has to be the node, with nodes, resources, servers, anything that you can call functions on in Godot is derived from object, except for the basic types that we're going to be seeing later. You have the OS folder, this has operating system functions, uh, some operating system stuff like mutexes, uh, we have threads, semaphores. There is the the OS class, which is very important, this has all the, the, the core operating system things. Again, going to go into more detail on this later on at some other point. So what else we have here? Well, we have a string folder. The string folder is for Unicode strings. Godot has its own Unicode system for parsing strings, doing translations and things like that. To be honest, everybody asks, why don't you use the std string in, 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 in Godot? And the thing is that there's so much you need actually on Unicode. And if you don't do it yourself, you have to use external libraries that are not really easy to integrate into a code base. So we created our own Unicode string, which is the class here, use string. Again, we're going to go into detail later and how it works, not the time today. 
What else do we have? We have variant. Well, variant is used for, you could say, uh, exposing all the basic types of the engine to like the higher level of the engine. Everything that has to do with variant is used for uh, for the inspector, for inspecting things into objects, for serialization, you can save data to disk. It's used for communications. If you want to send data across the network, things go via variant. A variant is like the, 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 the core like data type binding that you're going to be using in Godot. Again, going to be going into detail with this later. But just so you know that everything that has to do with the communication, serialization, inspecting, introspection uses variant in Godot. Okay, this is the core folder. The next folder is the server folder. So the servers are basically what makes things happen in a game engine. Uh, this is very game engine specific, of course. So you have several servers here. You have, as an example, the rendering server. The rendering server is used for anything that has to do with the rendering, like, for example, drawing triangles, uh, loading meshes, the 2D engine, things like that. There's also the display server. The display server is here. It doesn't have a folder, but display server has to do with windowing. It's what lets you create windows, receive input events, uh, resizing windows, has global menu support for operating systems that support this, like Mac OS. Uh, display server is mostly for managing the display, uh, multiple windows, monitors, these kind of things. There's also the physics servers, which are used for physics. We have a 2D physics server and a 3D physics server, which is the 2D and the 3D engine. Um, there is also the navigation server, which is for navigation. Everything that has to do with pathfinding and things like that is done with the navigation server. It's a low level server for navigation, 2D and 3D. We also have well, the audio server, which is for audio. The audio server is used for Anything that has to do with configuring audio it contains the audio driver class. The audio driver class is just something you implement for operating system. Um, what else? We have the text server, which is used for internationalization, it has a lot of functions related to fonts uh, and different languages. There's the, the XR server. This is all like game engine stuff in the low level. There's low level engine functions. One interesting thing about Gold is that you just can call any of these server functions directly uh, and just write low level code if you want and you bypass all the Godot scene system just directly and you can get really really efficient code written if you use the servers directly. If you have never done that I suggest investigating how to do it but it's very very useful on the Godot context. Okay so this is a note about the servers. Next we have the scene. The scene is the higher level Godot a game engine, you could say, is where you have the nodes and the resources. When you use the editor and you create a scene by placing nodes, all this is the scene. You have in scene main the base class, which is the node here, and this basically lets you uh, inherit from that, and everything else in the nodes inherit from this class. Uh, there are a couple more things here, uh, but we're going to be uh, skipping that for now. Again, this is just giving you an overview of the Godot file system for the project. Uh, other important things here are the viewport, which is used basically for viewports, the window class, which is for a window. This is the window node. The, if you create a window node, it's just a window in the operating system. If your operating system doesn't support windows, it's going to be embedded into the main window. So it's it's, it's just made uh, basically the, the main the main things that you have to create with, with nodes here uh, are supported here. So what else? We have the 2D nodes, the 3D nodes, animation nodes, audio nodes, debugger, related stuff. This just sends as an example uh, information from the scene to the editor. Uh, we have a lot of resources, 2D resources, 3D resources. Generally, the nodes also have resources in Godot, so we have everything in the scene uh, folder here, like for example, uh, the mesh resource, the cure of resource, multi mesh resource, all these are used by the nodes. So all created here together in the scene folder. There's theme related stuff, but that does basically it. So what else do we have here? The next thing we're going to be checking here after scene is the modules folder. You have here modules. Modules is just pluggable, pluggable stuff into the engine. It's just something that you can enable or disable and it's just Added, other than other than functionality on its own for the engine. For example, things like FVX support, Ogborv support, MP3 support, 
uh, TGA support, interactive music, all, all the multi mesh, that all this, not no, sorry, the, the grid map, not the multi mesh. GDescript is a model you can't turn off GDescript. But anything that is like pluggable into the engine, a specific functionality that you can disable is, is a model. This, this is the main difference between uh, models and the rest of the, the folders. Like you, just, you just can compile the engine without any of this and it's going to continue working. So, after models, we have, uh, I think, the third-party directory. The third-party directory, basically, is just nothing nothing that has to do with Godot itself. It's just external uh, libraries that we just bundle into the engine. For example, you can see we have uh, init for multiplayer, etc pack for importing uh, compressed textures. Uh, we have Embry for ray, tra ray tracing on CPU. We have, uh, what else we have here? Well, certificates, we have basis universal, we have squish also for compressing, ThorVG for parsing SVG, UFVX for parsing FBX. Uh, so things that have to do with uh, external libraries, we just bundle them inside of Godot. You may be asking, why do you bundle external libraries instead of just like linking them directly? Well, the thing is that Godot is very portable. And you can compile Godot for tons of platforms. You can compile Godot for the web. You can compile for Android, iOS. You can compile for Windows, Linux. And most of these libraries were never tested to work in that many operating systems or platforms. Uh, remember also there's people porting Godot to consoles. So it has to work everywhere. And it's very difficult to just tweak every library's build system to work on every platform you're exporting and then you have to stream these changes to the library maintain them is is very very complicated so in your case it's much easier to just take that library and bundle it inside of the engine uh, source code and then it just builds like any other piece of source code for any platform that we pour the engine to it's made just much easier this is what the third party directory is so next we have the drivers folder the driver folders is you could say anything that is not a platform. We're going to be seeing platforms later, of course. But the thing is that things that can work on many platforms, in general, like for example, Vulkan works on Windows and Linux. Uh, there's uh, there's some Windows f stuff like Threads and Mutexes and things like that, that they, they work on, on Windows, but also on Xbox, UWP, different platforms. The same for the same thing for uh, for many of the things here, like GLES3 also works on multiple platforms. So anything that has to do with the platform but works on multiple operating systems is in drivers. Not a lot of things, but just so you get an idea what this is for. Okay, so next we have the editor folder. The editor folder is absolutely huge. It's enormous. It's like half the engine. It's a mess. We always are discussing about organizing this, this better because it's so much code. Uh, but it's so much work, we keep kicking it back, but eventually we will do it. So this is going to have a different organization in the future. But just so you get an idea, this is the editor folder. Everything that has to do with the editor is here. Remember that the Godot editor fully uses the rest of the engine. So this depends on the other folders you have seen before. The editor folder just contains like references to any other part of the engine, save from the platform. We will see next what that is. What that is. Uh, but yeah, it's just just everything that has to do with the editor. Uh, many folders here, just for example, things that have to do with editor exporting, editor UI, all the editor icons are here, the icons, just all the SVGs that the editor uses are here. They are compiled into the binary when you compile the editor. Here's a project manager, which is in this folder. When you start the engine, you don't see the editor, you see the project manager. Uh, so you're going to have the code for the project manager is here. It's not very big, as you can see. Uh, editor theme support, editor translations are here. So this is all, again, anything that has to do with the editor. Then we have finally regarding to source code, the platform. This platform is just what Godot supports. Godot supports Android, iOS, uh, Linux, BSD. It's called Linux BSD, but it's mostly Linux. You have to be honest here. We have some BC BSD users, uh, not many, but we try to be friendly with them and we still uh, call it Linux BSD so they don't feel excluded. Uh, so yeah, it's basically Linux and also a bit of BSD. Uh, we have the macOS platform, we have the web platform and the Windows platform. And this is all the platforms that Godot currently supports, officially at least, because some people uh, have ported it to consoles. 
So what else we have? We have one last folder that has source code for the engine, which is main. This is the main entry point of the engine, which is the main function here. Uh, the main the main folder uh, has this class main.h, it's a header, and this is just how you start the engine. You call setup, then setup2, and then depend on the platform, you call iteration, force redraw, this kind of thing. Just to give you an example, some platforms like Android, they don't let you keep control of the main loop. They will be having a callback every frame for you to do stuff, so you have to call iteration. Other platforms don't do that, so you just call start and then you handle and start whatever you want. So anything that has to do with like executing stuff and starting the engine and finishing the engine is on the main header. And this is the main folder. It has a couple more things, but this is mainly what it is for. There's also the tests folder. The test folders have just unit tests pretty much and some feature tests, but for the most part, just unit tests. You can test lots of the engine. When, you, when we add new features, we generally add the unit tests here. And there is the bin directory, which is not here, it's not visible, uh, but when you build something, a bin directory is created here that contains the builds, like the, the binaries. And finally, the thing that you have here is the misc directory. Uh, this has like scripts and things related to just integrating the engine with something else, uh, all the CI checks, all the pre-commits and things like that. Uh, not really related to building the engine, but just like more for the project management. And then you have the doc folder. This has translations, some tools and the classes. And inside of the classes, you can see all the XML. This is all the documentation for all the classes in the engine. Uh, you probably have seen the source code and wonder why there's no like comment explaining what every function is. Well, we have this, but we have it externally to the engine. We have something like, for example, the AAABB class. Uh, you can see the description, the tutorials, constructors. We have a specific XML. And the thing is that this documentation is external, like it's 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 not inside of the source code. The nice thing about having external is that since Godot uses the same binding API for Jesus script, uh, C++ by Godot.cpp, uh, the, the C Sharp API, the GD extension API of people like using Godot in Rust or Neem or other languages, the API is the same for the engine. So this lets you have the documentation like tweaked for every uh, language using the engine separately. So the contributors just edit the documentation here. And then also this is the documentation that will appear on the Godot website. When you look at classes, they have the documentation and this is what you see there. And that's basically it. There's nothing else here. We have gone through all the folders in the Godot project file system. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you next time.